this is not the best layout that I've ever had. However, I was absolutely, what's the word, uh, determined, if at all possible, that I was going to get my dollhouse out here. And I did. And there it is. But we're going to talk about that in a little bit. First, we're going to we're going to start to the left and just walk around. Um, so over here, <laughs> I'm I'm not used to videoing. It's it's been like what two months, something like that. I think I did a real short video with my Easter tree, and that was just basically sitting down and just like I said, a few minutes. But this one will be longer, and it might be in two parts because I can only do so much. But anyway bookshelf with books that I use the pages from and various and sundry things and this is my um, die cutting machine it's the vagabond it's it works wonderfully this is a book that my neighbor gave me and that is what led to the dollhouse and um, I think I was having no, it wasn't surgery. Anyway, my neighbor got this for me. She saw it in a bookstore and, and just realized, oh, Jen's got to have this. And um, it was phenomenal. And that led to the dollhouse. But uh, we'll get to that in a minute, as I said. So up here is my typewriter. It's just an old-fashioned typewriter. And I love it. And, of course, it's my favorite color. And there is, you can see the the jar, an old mason jar. It's It's very old. And inside are, um, oh, what's the, dominoes. And those dominoes belong to my grandmother. So I thought that'd be a nice way of keeping them. The tree I got years and years ago, I found it at a junk shop and it was kind of rusty looking and everything. And I don't like rust look. I, it's just too, too rusty. So I painted it and I like it so much better. And up there you can see the, the, um, the banner that I did. I think I did a video on that one. And something new, well it's not new, it's new to me. This is a piece of embroidery work that was done about 1901 and it was a replica of another piece that is actually in the uh, Victoria and Albert Museum in uh, London. And I got that from my mother-in-law. She recently passed away and she left that to me. Um, it was just really neat. I always loved it because I loved, you know, textiles and stitching and things of that nature. So I thought that was really cool. And anyway, you can see some of the, let me see what time it is. <laughs> some of the other things that I've done over the years. Did some painting and, and what have you. Now, I did not paint the angel, but I, it, the painting of the angel was a gift. But I'm going to attempt to do it one day. Or, or one like it, hopefully. And that is, um, this was done by my grandson, Benjamin, at his school. And I just thought it was real sweet because he mentioned gummy. And that's what they call me. Um, my granddaughter, she's 19 now, 19 and a half. And she, by the way, she did that when she was little. But when she was little, she started, she wouldn't say grandma. She wouldn't say anything else but gummy. And so I have been gummy for 19 plus years. And this one actually says gummy on the top left of the heart. And that's when I was helping Jacob, my son-in-law, with Joseph and Benjamin. So I was really cool. Thought that was neat. So up here, a lot of storage, and I've had to go pretty high with it. Um, I brought down my embroidery frame because I am determined also to start doing some embroidery. Um, toward the top left are uh, things for Christmas journals. I always have great plans for my Christmas journals, and I never get but one or two out, if then. And um, that one with the uh, Butterick pattern, that's for a sewing journal. And then there's one in there for a cooking journal. Got lots of ideas. <laughs> lots and lots of ideas. And there's, I've got all of my different kinds of papers. Um, I usually use a minimum of a 24 pound. Uh, some of those are 28 pound. That's very thick. Um, but it's, it's just really neat to work with. But... That's my storage on all of that. Papers and cards, card stock scraps. That's hard to say all at once, but card stock scraps. Scraps of designer paper and, and things from, uh, you know, paper pads. And I think that's more of the sewing journal stuff. I mean, it's uh, I've got enough probably for five sewing journals and then still have some left over. Some blankets and stuff that I haven't cut up yet. <laughs> yes, I probably will. 
there on the bottom are my flower presses and the bags and things that I use for um, when I'm uh, packaging up materials to that I've you know items that I've sold and here are my sewing things uh, sewing mailing envelopes and stuff for those items that I've sold and then just a variety of things like that and then we switch over to here and the studio uh, was supposed to be an, in its in its first iteration <laughs> it was supposed to be a um a place where my husband could store his lawnmower and things like that believe it or not and one day he comes upstairs because that at that point I had my um I had my studio in the spare bedroom but he came upstairs my husband came upstairs and said Jan do you think that you could get all of this stuff out of here into the the structure outside that I'm built that I built um do you think that you could fit all your stuff in it well it took me about nano point zero 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 three seconds to say yes yes I could because I'd always wanted a studio kind of separate from the house um I just I always did I just thought it would be a really neat thing and you kind of leave the cares of the house away and so that's what he did and then he came in and he um put a tile floor down and he put up all these shelves in here that are wire I really like the wire shelves because they're not as, uh, they don't get dusty as much or they don't hold the dust or whatever. I really like them. And you can see, let's see, he painted everything. And this also has, I'm hoping I'm not going to get you too dizzy, but it has a lot, two lofts actually, and that's perfect for storage. Perfect for storage. And it's got two on both sides. When uh, my granddaughter was little, and before I put storage in there, she she had a little place up there with a blanket and a, uh, some books and things. And she called that, that was her studio. But now she's 19 and yeah, gone are those days. So here we have too much stuff. I admit it freely. Um, I have collected stuff. I have always collected things. And I have done crafts for years and years and years. So I've collected a lot of stuff for the variety of crafts that I do and it just so happens that I use the majority of everything that I've always done I use it in my uh, journal creations but there it is buttons and beads and tassels and, and a, a huge amount of these have been gifts a huge amount of these things were purchased like for a dollar or two a piece or pennies a piece I mean I'm when I see a bargain I go for it up there those are some tins that I got in England on my first visit to England. And I've got them packed with something. I'm not sure what. Got the little fans built in. And it also has a little, um, you can see over here, it's got a little heater, um, air conditioner unit type thing. Here's my collection of old bottles. I love old bottles. I just think they're neat. And those tins over there, there's actually four of them. I've got two of the, the two smaller ones I've pulled aside and using on my desk over on the other side of the room. But they belong to my grandmother. And uh, I just think they're neat. I was very close to my grandmother. And I've got a lot of pieces in here from her. As a matter of fact, this um, here's my sewing machine, my sewing desk. But that bench belonged to my grandmother. And uh, after she passed away, I got it. And it was a pale pink. My grandmother loved pinks and mauves and that color. So I just repainted it basically the same color, a little bit brighter. There's my little storage piece. I haven't used this much. I've got it full finally. And I've got things labeled. Because I just had too many small things that were just getting lost. And I'm one of those, if it's out of sight, it's out of mind. So... This is helping, but again, I haven't had it but maybe six months now. And um, the last several months, as, as I think I've mentioned, it have been very difficult for us. So we've, I've not been able to use it. This is a, <laughs> this is a blouse that I created years ago. Well, I didn't create the blouse. I bought the blouse at a thrift shop. It's a man's shirt. And um, I cut the sleeves off. And I just 
played around with it. I was just wanting to do something different. And I think I'd seen some, uh, an example of it or something like that in one of the Somerset magazines. Talk about work. I just, it was a lot of work, a lot of hand work. And then, let me just turn it around here. You can see the back. All those little beads I put on there, they're actually, um, what do you call it? Mother, not mother of pearl. Anyway, saltwater pearls? Oh, well, whatever. And then the little things running down, the lattice or whatever you want to call it. And it's actually, you can wear it with, um, and I have worn it. I haven't worn it in years, but I think I, I think I can still fit in it. Here you see my shelves that, um, where I store a lot of my fabrics and things for my tea cozies. I, I sell those online. Done that for years. And you can see some of the things like I now have for jewelry because I want to start doing some tassels and things like that. And I got this fun tray. Well, not the tray itself. The tray my grandfather whittled himself and put together. But all these beads and bits and pieces I've recently acquired well most of them I did and I'm just I'm wanting to do tassels and fun things probably for sale some of them but anyway you have to have the things to do it with and that's in here and then this is my embroidery container that's new as well because I wanted a place that I could pull that out travel with it do whatever and um and have it all in one handy piece and here you can see I did these several months back and uh, it's using glue sticks, colored glue sticks. And of course the key to that is you use a glue gun that is only for those glue pieces. Otherwise you're going to get that color and everything when you use your glue. Yeah, very exciting. <laughs> oh goodness, those are some of the... I, I got these flowers the other day at the dollar store. Well, and there's one. That's good. It's even better. And I thought, you know, if we can do stickers under our specimen cards, then we should be able to do silk flowers too. So I'm going to give that a try. Up there you see more buttons and bits and pieces. And you can see that banner that I just finished. I started that thing years ago. And just now finishing up with it. Like maybe a month ago or something like that. The... Um, the ladder, I had, my husband is genius, but, uh, well, there's no buts to it. He is a genius, but he doesn't want to take credit for anything. But this is ingenious. If you can see at the top of the stairs, or the, the, the stair, whatever you want to call it, ladder, there are hooks on either end. And those hooks are designed to hook over that metal bar that runs straight across and right now it's they're not on the bar because i've got it straightened up that's one of the things i had to move uh move things around the ladder has to be right there at this point in time but um my husband knows how very graceful and i put that in quotes how very graceful i am and he didn't want me falling and the ladder slipping and whatever. So it's designed that when you pull the ladder down a little bit, those hooks go over those bars. And there are bars on both sides. You can see there's the bar on this side and there's the second loft. And it literally hooks over that so that that ladder is not going anywhere and it's extremely stable. Um... So, anyway, that's what that is. And yes, I, I kind of went crazy painting it. I wanted something totally different, so I painted it in wild colors. And you should have seen the looks I got from Nigel, that's my husband, when I had it outside. This was years ago when I first painted it. And he's like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? I said, well, I just want, you know. He says, all right, it's your studio. So, but anyway, there's the wall. There's uh, some hanging beads and stuff. And that picture reminds me of my cat, Sebastian. Um, he just died in December. Such an amazing cat. I just, he was just a wonderful cat. So, and there he is. It's not him actually, but it does remind me of him. He was, um, one of those gray and black and kind of a striped tiger type thing. <laughs> that sounds very intelligent, but anyway. So here we have, um, 
more of my linens that I've collected. These are for journals and what have you. And, um, yeah, it's about three drawers. I, you know, I need to start going through this stuff, really going through it and, um, giving it away or selling it or doing something because it's just, it's, I'll never use all of it. That's part of the problem I've got with these items up here on the very top it's Christmas items that I had that I was making Christmas ornaments and this and that and everything else when I had a um there was a an antique mall kind of like a, a, a mall type thing and you had individual stalls and I had a stall in there and so I was making all kinds of Christmas stuff and then I closed it because I thought no I just it's not what I wanted to do but I still have all this stuff and I haven't done anything else with it. So I need to either do something with it or start getting rid of it somehow. Like I said, I may give it away. I may sell it or I may do a combination of all, all of it. But anyway, those dresses up there, that one is an Edwardian dress about 1910. Um, my mother-in-law gave it to me, gosh, when, when my granddaughter was little, it was for her. And I just thought it was really neat. So I put her up there. And this other dress is one, again, that my granddaughter wore when she was about five, maybe. It's uh, dark velvet at the top, and then, of course, the silky uh, fabric at the bottom, and it's in purple, one of her favorite colors. So, and then, let's see, what else of interest? I've got all of the, I've tried to keep organized. If I'm not organized, I go nuts. So, I, I do try and keep organized, and then I'm I'm a much happier camper. Now that, that does not mean that I'm a neat person when I'm creating because when I'm creating, all bets are off. Everything is all over the place. But as soon as I finish a project, I put it all back and then I start all over again on something new. Um, some people think that's crazy, but that's that's how it works for me. Here is my jewelry that I've had for ages and ages and ages and ages. I used to work um creating bits and pieces of jewelry and again you you find a good sale or something some of these things were practically given away because they were just little pennies and it was just amazing so i still have a lot of that to work with too and again i'm using those on my journals this is my card stock that's on a you know on pads and let's see here we have these are from a wedding dress that I bought for like 10 or 15 dollars I forget now which it was totally destroyed the wedding dress you couldn't wear it as a wedding dress but they were selling it basically just for someone to probably just cut it up like I did and use bits and pieces so I was able to do that there's my handy dandy cutter I have arthritis in my hands and it's very difficult for me to um, to use scissors all a lot. So I try and use that little monster as much as possible. It works really well. Uh, let's see. We've got ribbons, 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 and more ribbons. There's a drawer full here. And down in here. See all of that. And laces. And more laces. <laughs> you can never have too much lace, can you? But I use it a lot. And um, and I have fun with it. So There we have some paper. and um, That's actually an umbrella stand. The blue and white thing. Um, but it broke. I, I broke it as a matter of fact. I accidentally knocked it over. And it broke in several pieces. And I was like, oh my gosh. Well, my husband glued it back together for me. And it works fine. He does things like that. And he spoils me. I admit it. These are just bits and pieces that I use for everything that I work on. This is my cookie jar that I brought from inside the house. I No, it does not have cookies in it. Or I'd be eating them all the time. But uh, it was just a nice little piece. It was a gift to me. A wedding present from a lady I worked with at a bookstore. And up there. See some of the things that... Again, if I find something on sale, I, I grab it and then I'm going to use it later on. And, and that's what, how I get things. I hate paying full price for pretty much anything. 
unless it's just an absolute, you know, something I've fallen in love with. But here we have some of my charms. Um, I'm not sure what else you'd call it. To go on tassels and things like that. Some of them I've made. Some of them I've purchased. Some of, some of them other people have made. Look at this one. This one is precious. I got these at the last retreat from Kat. Her name was Catherine and she did those with buttons. That was so sweet. She also did the little mushroom one. And, you know, just beads and stuff like that. But it's fun. All of my glues. Different glues. Lots and lots of glue. That's a little primitive thing that my grand painted. My grandfather whittled it and my grand painted it. Not, it's, it's special to me. And there's just a magazine piece, but I thought, wouldn't that be cool to do aprons, like art aprons? So I may do that one day. Who knows? There's just no telling. I do some aprons already on my, they're on my uh, shop online on Etsy, but I just thought it'd be neat. So I might do that one day. You never know. My music. And um, here, more storage. That's where I keep all of my... Oh, goodness. Well, we've got journal play, which is... Let me just show you what I... And these little um, plastic things. Baby food cups. When my grandsons were babies. <laughs> Perfect. And then just stuff. Envelopes. Rubber stamps. Inks and things like that. I mean, it just goes on and on. Some of my Edith Holden books, I do have quite a few. I've managed to get them on fabulously good low prices. Um, fabric scraps. These are more scraps of laces and small bits and pieces. Up here are journals that I have purchased um, or were given. And now this one I purchased and I redid the, the inside of it. Um, to be an, an Edith Holden lap book type thing. <laughs> and that, I'm going to do a video on that when I finish it, but that is uh, a book that I'm going to, I did not make it myself. It's a beautiful book. Absolutely stunning. I did add this one charm on it of the little dragonfly, but uh, the lady that I purchased it from did a fabulous job. All right, I keep telling you that, and then I'm not showing you the front of it, so that's not really fair, is it? So I will put it down here, and it's going to be my fairy journal. And I'm put, putting in my collection of fairies from the, um, oh, I can't believe I'm going to forget this. Mary, oh, it's gone. I'll think of it later on, but um, and I'll put it down in the description. But she did a fabulous job. I could never have done anything like that. I wouldn't have taken the time. And I'm going to put my collection of uh, flower fairies in there. And it's just really cool. So anyway, there, there's that. This is These are my desks. They're kind of open. They're movable. I had only purchased one. It arrived. And it was broken. And I took pictures and I explained to them. I said, this is, this is wrong. And they agreed, yes, it's broken. Um, but they, so I said, you know, I, you pay for it to come back to you and, and I'll, and give me a refund or give me another one. I would prefer another one. They said, no problem. Don't bother returning it. Just get rid of it and we'll send you another one. So they sent me a replacement and they're identical. Well, my husband who had been at work at the time, he gets home three or four days later and he starts looking at it and fiddling with it and he got it to work. And by then I'd already had two desks. So I'm like, well, all right, it is what it is. So, that's how I have two desks, and it's really neat because they move up and down. They have a small thing for, you know, underneath, but I don't use that much. But it is neat because I can separate them, um, and they move up, down, however, you know, like that. Up there is a, a wire angel that my mother got me. We have a, an antique mall called Packard's here in Huntsville, Alabama. That's right next to Madison, Alabama, where I live. And um, Mom and I like to go there every now and then. And we don't go too often because we know we get stuff we don't really need at all. Back there is 
uh, a giant butterfly that has beads, or not beads, but but uh, not buttons. What are they? Peas and beans uh, that my granddaughter made when she was younger. So I have a lot of her art. And more stuff. This is a beautiful painting. Of, a friend did this for me. Sweet girl, Katie. Isn't that lovely? She had cancer, and um, I just... I wanted to do something for her, so I just kept encouraging her by making stuff for her and, you know, little happy things and stuff like that. And and then she did that for me, and I thought, wow. And she's cancer-free now. Thank God. So we really appreciate that. Here we have... <laughs> okay, so we... I'll take you up the top first. This is a, what I call a fruit plaque. This goes over the front of our door on the outside at Christmas time. And, I, and then the two smaller ones go to either side of the door. And I did one in red apples, which really looked much better. I prefer the red apples, but it came apart, so I have to redo it. And I haven't redone it. It's been years now, but oh well. But, of course, the, the problem is, where do you store all this stuff? Because we really go all out at Christmas, and it's like, well, it is what it is. So it comes to the, comes to the studio. Um, this is just a fun container of or a uh, what do you call it wall cabinet they just hold bits and bobs and things like that i have to show you a couple of things that i just love look at this i love old advertising this is johnson's baby powder and there's baby powder in it i'd never seen a small one and so i got that at a junk shop this as happy memories as well you wouldn't think it'd be happy memories but my grandfather was a carpenter and he was basically self-taught um and when he would cut his finger which he well toward the end of his life he cut several fingers off yep it's true but you know huh he took the safety off of his saws because it was going too slow but anyway when he was younger and he was doing the carpentry work uh, as his you know that was his work when he would cut his finger or something, they didn't stop for band-aids. First of all, you didn't have band-aids all over the place like you do now. I mean, my grandfather died, what, 10 years ago at least, and he was 91 at the time. So what he would do, he would take adhesive tape. He just carried one of these things with him, and he'd just wrap adhesive tape around it, and that was it. And I was forever seeing little nicks, like my grand did the same thing. I would go over to her house, and there would be a um, a piece of tape wrapped around her thumb or whatever. Yeah, I nicked my hand on the knife or whatever. So, he does have actually happy memories. There's a bear bottle. I just like these because you don't see advertising anymore like this. And these, it's metal. It's real glass. Oh, my goodness. And I haven't slashed my wrist with it or broken it or anything. So, it does, it's, no, it's not plastic. And I just think it's cool. What have I got in there? Looks like hooks and eyelets. So that type of thing I really like. That little blue container was my grandmother's. That was my first Mother's Day present from my two daughters, who were like one and five at the time. And that's something that I, that was my first piece of ribbon embroidery work I did for my grandmother. And I got it after she passed away. And this belonged to my paternal grandmother. She died when I was nine. And my dad said I could have anything in the house I wanted, and I had always loved this because the, the glass is actually, um, it's curved out. And it's, on the glass is painted the, the black, the, the figure and the tree and what have you. And then it's superimposed on another piece, which is the cardstock, and that's the mountains. So I thought that was neat. And here we have stuff that I've done either myself or I've gotten them from uh, friends at my um, art retreat that I go to. And it's just really cool. And then my little tree, Nigel, he, he thinks my little tree is scraggly looking, which it is, but that's why I like it. It's, what can I say? I'm just kind of strange. So, but anyway, there it is. And now I'm going to take you to the doll house. So it's actually a cabinet house. And again, it comes back from this book, and this was years ago when my youngest daughter was pretty much leaving the house. She was growing up, 
and I thought I've got to do something to um, to keep myself from going crazy. And I tell you what, I'm going to stop now because we're right at 30 minutes and then I'll start up again with the rest of this story. So go to part two and we'll go from there. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.